I have public affairs analyst Mustafa Inwenla joining me now to discuss the latest figures on the domestic flights uh, in Nigeria. Welcome on board, Mustafa. Thanks for joining us on Business Insight. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Justin. All right. So let's talk about aviation. Let me start. Um, what was your last fare and what was the last time you traveled um, by air and then what was um, the cost like as in uh, overtime? Okay, so essentially, uh, the, we, have, we have seen that lately that there's so much going on in our aviation industry. My last trip to, my last local trip was to Abuja barely a few weeks ago, and it cost me, you know, fairly some, something around 300,000 naira for a round trip to, and for to, to Lagos. Mm. Mm. And also, we have seen what is also happening internationally too. So, I mean, I mean, I was, I was in the UK a few months ago. It cost me well over a million for a round trip okay. back and forth to the UK and Nigeria. But again, essentially, we have seen that uh, there's so much going on in our aviation industry. Mm. Uh, and I don't think the manifestation of what we're seeing now started to happen recently. It's been happening gradually over a period of time. If you want to, for those, who, for those of us who are students of history, if you want to trace it back to uh, 2002 when... Uh, our Nigerian Airways were, you know, practically liquidated. Mm. 2004, sorry, and we have seen that over time the prices of um, tickets for aircraft increased over time. Last year, if you want to go from Lagos to Abuja, it will only cost you a round trip of a fairly hundred thousand naira. Mm. But this year, we've seen that it's well over three hundred thousand naira. That's even if you book on time ahead. So I, I know somebody who had to pay almost half a million to go to Abuja. But, but most of all, it is just a, a flight that's uh, on the average an yes. hour uh, flight, uh, you know, or maybe okay, if it's a, it's a round trip, let's say two hours or the most, uh, two yes. hours, 30 minutes, say three hours. So how come we're paying so much in our country when ordinarily it should not be so? Because if you look at it, I don't understand why. Is it that uh, we're also battling the same issue that we have locally as for land transportation with the fuel uh, scarcity? Or is it an aviation uh, uh, fuel hike or what exactly? Or is so it the, if you, the main if you, costs? If you listen to uh, a submission from the Minister of Aviation mm. and the Aerospace Development, Festus Kiyama, recently, the reason for the, for the, for the uh, hike in the airfare is because of shortage in aircraft that we have. As of 2022, the total number of aircraft that we had in, you know, flying domestically we had in Nigeria is about 107 aircraft. Mm -hmm. But as of last month, the, you know, the total number of aircraft we have currently flying domestic, domestically is about 67. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that, you see that there is a 39% plunge mm -hmm. in, the, in the numbers of aircraft, you know, flying, servicing 220 mm -hmm. million Nigerians. So naturally, if there is no adequate aircraft, there's going to be an increase in price because there's, because the, the demand for people who want to travel by air yeah. has increased over time because our roads are not safe. Yeah. And we have said it that we don't, we don't I mean, aside from uh, you know, flying by air, we have other modes of transportation that our government needs to also strengthen. Yeah. If our roads are safe, there's going to be, if I, practically nobody will be flying. Yeah. For me as a person, I even prefer go, traveling by road because there's yeah. a lot of, uh, you know, entertainment that comes with it and all that mm. you, you, is fun. What you see, you know, yeah. on the road. But the yeah, so and fun, if you want to ask me, a lot of people even have phobia for flying. So, mm. but because our roads are not safe, that's why it, the only means of transportation fly. right now that is safe mm. and fast is by air. And that's why you have seen the increased amount of uh, price for tickets for flying, you know, locally mm. and even internationally. But, and but, also, but, and, and even further, mm. further going, the yes. Minister of Aviation also said that the scarcity of dollars mm. also mm. is. A major problem for local operators who have airlines and that's because most of the times they want to buy their spare parts mm. and there's no dollars for them to buy spare parts because it has to be know, done internationally it has to be done internationally so mm. so all these are attendant you know effects of not having policies that will enable these local operators we've seen airlines that have mm. folded up i mean with klm and all that a lot of them have, have even gone moribund so those are the issues so i think that over time, we need to understand how countries like Ethiopia mm. are able to keep up to that standard. Okay, I get all of that, most of yes. but, but the, the challenge right now, you talked about um, how uh, you know we don't have um, um, so much um, aircraft you yeah. know, to cater to local demand. Yes. So what can we really do in terms of maybe public partner, private partner? Because if you look at it, the aviation sector, you know, to operate in it is really very, uh, very, very capital intensive. Because intensive, you know, yeah. even to do maintenance, because they have lots of checks, they do, they do C checks, they do D checks, and all of that. And most of that, you, have, you will agree with me too, is um, done internationally and they have to source for, you know, um, Forex to do that. Right, so yeah. how can the government maybe come in in terms of uh, 
since the local uh, industry is suffering in terms of uh, maybe giving some sort of support, you know, for you know industry players so they can actually uh, find a headway or something. So uh, over time, we've also been you know trying to emphasize on, of course, public and private sector partnership. Uh, I mean, sadly, the private sector are the ones trying to salvage so many situations right now with the uh, air, airspace and all that. Because if you look at most of the local operators right now, they are all privately owned. True. I um, mean, perhaps some, I think fairly one of the best uh, local airlines right now is still Ibon Air, and I think also a lot of them have you know private ownership and all that. But as uh, but for me, I think the government needs to you know look at ways to make this operation very easy for these operators. Mm. There's so much, sometimes they, they complain about, you know, double taxation, you know, mm -hmm. they complain about, you know, the, the, the government, you know, tries to make them off so many rates and taxes and it, it becomes too mm. much of higher expenses for them. Mm. And also policies, I mean, they should, the government should come up with policies to, you know, give this, uh, you know, local operators some mm. kind of a level playing ground where it would drastically affect, you know, it would drastically bring down the price of air, you know, flying by air. Okay. Uh, now, yeah. The reason why I asked that, because uh, over time, you've known what's happened with uh, Nigeria Airways and Nigeria, you know, the whole talk of a national carrier, even the one that is still ongoing now, with what happened with uh, the former aviation minister and the Ethiopian airline and all of that. No, what happened to the former, <laughs> the former aviation minister was a national embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm asking that because I think we still need uh, we still need um, the federal um, government some interplay in all of this. Because if you look at local transportation, specifically land transport yeah. in Lagos, the Lagos state government sort of came into the picture with um, the um, bus rapid transport system, a transit system, you know, with the BRT buses. And over time, most Nigerians as they still use that to apply. That is their own way of supporting. And uh, when there were issues, the, the state government still came around to caught them the first by half. So because there was uh, there was a story in the news that the federal government was mulling merging um, ARIC and aero contractors to, into a national carrier. Well, how far would that go? So, 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 so. Maybe if they mull it, if they join them into a national carrier, maybe they might look at the issues of um, aircraft, uh, you know, uh, scarcity, or not scarcity, as in uh, less air class, uh, aircraft so that they can cater to local flyers. So for me, I'm still, I'm still very much surprised that a country, a, a 63-year-old country like Nigeria, mm. is struggling to have a national carrier, mm. not, not even a, lo a local carrier that is government-owned. Mm. And, th and that's one of the reasons how, why we have this hike. We've said it that the local operators are going through air, running those airlines. Some of them are even struggling. Some have le less than two aircraft, some have only one, some have three, so they are struggling. That's why when you go to airport now, if you have a local flight, a, 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 a domestic flight to catch, if you are not careful, you will miss that flight because hmm. they come up to cancel flights. We, we, we saw a case of a particular uh, influencer recently you know, complaining about how his flight was canceled without any reason. Just like that. Just like that, and he had an appointment to catch in Abuja. So those are the issues. So because a lot of them are struggling to, to keep up with operations. And if that continues, you will continue to see a lot of a lot of lacuna in that or deficit in that industry. So I think that the Ministry of Minister Minister of Aviation needs to, and even the NCAA. So again, ultimately, I think that um, the, it is very evident that the reason for the hike is simple. We have limited aircraft servicing 222 million a year. Mm. So I think the government needs to invest more in our aviation industry. There needs to be more aircraft. In a case where we have about less than 70 aircraft carrying people from different parts of the states, you know, locally, is, is not going, it's not going to suffice. Mm. It's not going to be sufficient to solve that gap in that the deficit in the aviation industry. Because we have seen that our roads are not safe, our waterways are not that effective. And so far, so good. The, the, you know, the airplane and you know, flying by air is still the fastest and safest. Yeah. So, so we have seen that the government needs to, you know, you know, divert a lot of attention to that sector to make yeah. sure that that sector becomes a very viable sector. The private-owned airlines, we have seen how overwhelmed that they are. But we have less than, uh, we have, we have, I think we have fairly about 20 or there about 23, uh, you know, domestic airlines, you know, servicing the whole of Nigeria. And we have seen that there are limited aircraft, so we need the government to invest more in aircraft. But the, but the issue of you know the issue of the issue of looking away from that industry will continue to affect us. Yeah. That sector alone can, uh, the aviation industry alone is giving countries like Ken, I mean Kenya, Ethiopia a lot of revenue you know? yearly. No, a lot yes. of for me, Ken, if Ethiopia is is seen as I think the headquarters of all airlines. Like if you go there, Africa. and their and their and their air, their airlines are really on point. Most yeah. you hardly get any sort of delays 
or cancellation of flights and all that. So I think our government also needs to strengthen that aviation sector, starting from even renovating our airports, starting from investing more in, in, in on aircraft, such that we can even have, Nigeria is still part of the 15 African countries who do not have national flag, a, a flag carrier, a national carrier. Mm. So it, for me, it's an embarrassment. And I think that a country of 63 years old, mm. Nigeria, where we call ourselves a giant of Africa, we, we are not giant in a lot of areas. Okay. So most of I know, uh, as we round off now, I know we need to fix the aviation sector because yes. um, even the issue of multiple taxation and all that, that um, have been uh, an issue over time. Even there was, there was a threat by the aviation workers to even go on a strike over yes. some issues. But let's, uh, we, go, we can't talk about um, air, air, uh, air aviation and air travels without even still talking about local transportation. Because right now, the reason why uh, most people are surging towards um, the, um, the air transport is because of the local ones. But even the local ones now, as in land transportation right now, yeah. they still have issues because uh, from the last report, they also increased over time because We've been having issues of uh, petrol scarcity. We're having issues yeah. of um, other things. So how do we even just ensure a holistic uh, fixing of the transportation system? So that way, you can either decide to go by rail, go by road, go by water, or even travel by air. So, so whether we like it or not, our, our transport industry generally has a lot of deficits. Uh, I think uh, so far, I think Lagos State's government as a, as a state is trying to you know, have alternative mode of transportation system working, mm. like, the, like the blue rails and, you know, a lot of, we have a lot that's of... That's just uh, Lagos. Yeah, that's just Lagos. So, and I think those blue, those rail lines, you know, you know, you know, travel as far as other, you know, interstates and all that. But I think so, so far so good. If we can put, you see, it's very, it's very, it's very, it's very essential that we understand that countries who have very effective, effective transport system didn't mm. start in, you know, in one day. Okay. The transport system in the UK is one of the best in the world. The transport system in China is one of the best in the world. Their railways are very, very effective. They are very, very timely. Even the, yeah. even the, even, even the bus transport system. But we live in a country where our, even our mode of transportation that is very common, the bus, the yellow buses that we depend on are not really reliable. Yeah. As soon as, just, just yesterday, as soon as rain starts, you hardly see any transport, any bus, bus driver on the road. Yeah. So those are the issues. That's because our waterways are not that effective. Okay. And also our railway system needs to be up and running. I mean, how many people will still want to go on, you know, on railways? Because most of the time, the kind of railways we see from Oshodi to other parts of Lagos are not railways that, you, mm. that a, a, an airline would want to go into because of the kind of security and the kind of ambience that you see. So, so at the point, I think, I think the new ones that the government is coming up with now are very, very are decent and all that. So... Generally, we need to improve on our uh, transportation industry. The cost of trans you know, moving ourselves from one point to another is becoming too high. Yeah. Even moving goods and services, that's why we've seen what has happened in the inflation, in the For cost of goods and, and services everything. generally, because yes. we're paying so much to, to, to commute ourselves from one point to another. So, but essentially, I think that the, the uh, airlines is still... I mean, of course, not everybody can afford to travel by air. True. Traveling by air these days is a lot of luxury. It's almost like a luxury. No? I, yeah. I, know, I know people who are millionaires who cannot even dare it. Mm. They, so a lot of times they have to either go by road and just get a security guard to protect them to wherever they are going True. to. But our roads are bad. Aside from even insecurity, our roads are bad. Okay. If you want to go from, from here now to Songot, the road from, from Abuli Egba all the way down is terrible. You wonder, is there a government in this country? Hmm. So those are the issues, except for those who knows the who knows the inner routes, you know, internally to right. not to do, to avoid those uh, bad um, express. So those are the issues. So generally, I think that the government needs to come up with something very right. holistic. The aviation industry needs a lot of help. Okay. The local operators are frustrated. There's a lot of they are, they are lamenting. Some 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 do not even carry one single flight a day. Hmm. And those are the issues. And some of them will end up collecting money from you know passengers and not even fly. They'll cancel your flight. There will not be any refund. They will tell you to go and wait. So those are the issues. So I think something has to be done. And I think that Professor Kiyama is trying to do something differently. Uh -huh. But I hope he's able to, you know, to lift it in the I hope the federal government and the aviation um, stakeholders get the act together so that uh, this issue of um, air uh, fares uh, hike can be, you know, nipped in the bud because it's becoming very alarming just to a local trip and businesses, you know, lives are affected by the day. We must have a very big thank you to you, Mustafa, for thank your you time for having on the show today. Thank we do you appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.